third portion, which is the insectivorous plants, right? Which have a very interesting kind, uh, the very interesting way by which they have nutrition, right? Now, these are also, you know, the leaves could be green in color. Most of the times, they are green in color, right? That means they can make their own food. Then why do they have to depend on other, why do they have to depend on insects? If they can make their own food. Ma'am, maybe their root system is not very developed, so they can't get water and uh, nutrients. But it will not get water from insects, right? Now the reason why is they are still, yes, Kartik, they have less minerals. The, re the requirement for their minerals, especially nitrogen, is very high. They require, you know, insectivorous plants require high nitrogen. They require high nitrogen. There are, every plants have different requirements. There are certain plants, you know, flowering plants require high nitrogen, right? There are so many pitchers, you know, they have to make. So they require a lot of nitrogen to make those pitchers. That's the reason why maybe they, their nitrogen requirement is very high. There are certain plants where the calcium requirement is high. So it depends from plants to plants. So, and most of the time, nitrogen is not found abundantly in soil. Most of the time you will see, uh, you know, farmers use a lot of ammonia. Ammonia is a very commonly used fertilizer. Commonly used fertilizer, uh, commonly used fertilizer, especially in, um, you know, leguminous plants. From whichever plant we get a lot of protein like dal and also cereals, you know, peas, peanuts, soya bean, those kind of, you know, farmers doing farming of peanuts, they use a lot of ammonia in their, um, as fertilizers. Why? Because they give a lot of nitrogen. And nitrogen actually, when it gets converted to whatever, uh, ammonia and whatever, you know, those produce a lot of protein-rich fruits, which are actually peanuts, peas, beans, soya bean, pulses, legumes, basically, okay? So again, getting back to nutrition in plants, they take their nitrogen intake from insects. Insects, again, you know, they are very high in nitrogen. The nitrogen content in insects is very high. High Nitrogen means protein, a kind of protein. Just nitrogen is basically a mineral, but okay, just take it into consideration that insects are high on nitrogen. So they trap the insects and they consume it. How do they do it? Let's understand it scientifically. We have understood the requirement why some plants need to eat insects. You know, a mango tree would not have insects, right? Because a mango tree, whatever nutrition it requires, it takes it from the soil. And if it is deficient, it will not provide much quality rich mangoes. And if a farmer or a person gives fertilizers to that mango tree, it will again give very healthy, juicy mangoes, right? So now let's understand, now that we have understood the requirement, a few examples, pitcher plant, why pitcher? Pitcher means it looks like a pitcher. What is pitcher? Pitcher means something which looks like a pot. Pitcher means looks like a pot. Right? So a uh, pot, sorry, I meant a pot. A uh, and pot would be different. Drosera, Drosera is also known as sundew. Right? It's, it's a very colorful man. Scale insect is present in mango water. I could not understand that, Karthik. Mango tree. Yes. So that's a pest. That is a pest which is there in mango tree. That For that, you know, pest control needs to be done. Sticky too. Yes, Drosera is very sticky. And that is the defense mechanism that it has. It's very sticky once you're right. You know, bladderwort is also yet another kind of, uh, you know, insectivorous plant. And so is Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap and pitcher plant, these two are very commonly studied. You know, we, we see a lot of their pictures. We, since childhood, we are very curious, so we know about them. So let's study the entire mechanism. Um, what is the other name of Drosera? Sundew. I'll tell you. I have mentioned everything. Here, it is known as sundew. No, Karthik, Venus flytrap will not eat our hands. I'll tell you also the reason why it will not eat our hands. Okay, now, now, first let's, uh, you know, get into pitcher plant. Now, why pitcher? 
because as I said, it looks like a picture. The entire picture is not there. Otherwise, you could have seen. You could also do a Google search and find out. Okay, I would also recommend all of you to do a, you know, go to Google and do a video, video, uh, maybe go to YouTube and do a video search of how a pitcher plant traps an insects and how it, the, the entire mechanism is a very beautiful thing to watch. So please do it. You know, it's good for understanding and observation. So what happens is that it has a pitcher here and it has a lid. Lid means a dhakkan, right? So this is the picture. Now, if you can see, if I enlarge it, you know, there are this certain white color hairy stuff which is pointing downwards. And there is, there is a fluid-like substance here which is basically nothing but digestive juices. And you can also see certain insects here. Very little small insects, tiny little insects. Okay. What happens is that the moment... Uh, insect sits here on the edges, on the edge. You know, if an insect sits here on the edge, you know, it feels the weight. So, a pitcher plant is designed by nature in such a way that the moment it, the weight is felt by a mechanism, the lid closes. You know, the lid closes. See that. And must, the insect must have sat on the edge. The moment the pitcher felt a little weight, you know, it can only feel maybe a weight from zero. A to B gram. That's the reason why if we keep our hands, maybe, you know, it might close, but our hands are too heavy for it. That's the reason why, and we are intelligent enough not to put our hands inside, right? So we are much more intelligent than a Venus flytrap or a pitcher plant. So that's the reason why. Um, uh, and we also have the strength to pull our finger out also. Correct. You know, the lid is strong enough for an insect, but the lid is not stronger than our hands or our muscles right you're right so what happens is that the moment you know the weight is felt on the edges and there are these man so uh, you know these white hairs it will help the it will actually push the insect inside the direction is all downwards and a little little slippery and hairy so the insect by default will slide inside even if it tries to come up it will still slide down. So, you know, I would suggest that all of you watch videos of how a pitcher plant, a drosera or a Venus flytrap in action. You know, totally there are various videos where wild photographers have shot it. So you must watch. You know, it's very interesting to watch. So the moment the lid closes, this, this tiny insect stays inside the fluid maybe for a few hours or a few days depending on how small or big it is. And... What this liquid does, this is basically an enzyme, as Priscilla very rightly said, it disintegrates the insects into little, little pieces. And then over a period of time, it will convert into a complete slimy structure. And then the insectivorous plant will have that, you know, as its nutrition, because that insect is rich in nitrogen. So this pitcher plant has got its nitrogen supply from these insects right and obviously pitcher plants have green leaves they have broad big leaves it will do photosynthesis like it will have its normal quota of water minerals sunlight carbon dioxide from the leaves itself the only thing it lacked was nitrogen which it has got from these insects am i clear any doubts any issues ma'am um like you said that the, uh, the pitcher plant takes nitrogen from the insect. So, if what if the insect has other uh, nutrients, does the pitcher plant absorb that or does it remove it? No, uh, you know, it will take, it. most of the part would be nitrogen. It would absorb what it would maximum absorb would be nitrogen. And the remaining would remain in this maybe digestive juice and slowly it might flush out in some other way. But it would take what it requires. An insect has a lot of other nutrients as well, apart from nitrogen. So maybe it might just take trace amounts of those. But mainly what it would take is the uh, uh, nitrogen. Mama, have a doubt. Yes, please. Mom, like when, if an insect is trapped in the pitcher plant, mm -hmm. and uh, as you uh, told that it will be in the fluid for days or uh, days or hours, 
So will the lid be open or will it be closed? The lid will be closed. The lid will be closed. Maybe over a period of time it will open the lid. Because here you see, here the insects are there. Maybe it is disintegrated or something. But after a certain while, it will open the lid. It is ready for you know its next hunt, its next trap. So, so ma'am, can two insects, like two small insects, can go in the go in the same time? Yes, or yes. Why insects? not? Yes, yes. Why not? It depends on how big. Even pitcher plants are of several varieties and species. So it depends on how big the pitcher is. What is its capacity? How much of fluid enzyme does it have inside? It depends on all those factors. But yes, why too? That's what I'm saying. I'm recommending that you must watch the video. Many a times, you know, maybe five, six insects fly and sit here on the edge together. It will close the trap. It will close the lid and trap all four or five of them together. If the pitcher is comparatively bigger, lid would be harder for the five uh, insects to open or escape. It will slide inside. Mom, if the like if the pitcher plant is big but the flu, uh, the, but there is less fluid, what will happen then? Sorry, I didn't get that question, Anna. Mom, if the pitcher plant is big, like its opening is big, mm -hmm. and if the fluid it contains is uh, less, so will even if it traps those many insects, like will it get the sufficient nutrition? See, it depends. Maybe it will take a longer time to, you know, uh, disintegrate those insects. And in the meanwhile, you know, uh, it secretes more of those digestive juices. Because nature, as I said, you know, is very intelligent enough to make a balance. It balances out everything. If the, maybe if the fluid is less, maybe then the plant, insectivorous plant is very old enough. It's unable to make such a certain amount of digestive juice. So then its nutrition requirement also goes down. Instead, when it was a young plant, it required five insects a day. Now that it has become a old mature plant, now it requires two insects a day. Okay, so it all depends. Okay, once you wanted to ask which, which enzyme does the plant contain? Basically, you know, uh, there are there are there's a huge class or huge group of enzyme, but basically they are phosphatases or proteases. Proteases, there are these enzymes called proteases. Let me just type it down. Proteases. Or these are the enzymes, you know, enzymes. It would be instead of using the word digestive juices, use the word enzymes, which break down the insects into smaller pieces. And so these are the name of the enzymes. <clears throat> okay. Now coming to Drosera. Drosera, as I said, is also known as sundew. Why sundew? Because it looks magnificent under sun. You know, they have, it has these, you know, tiny tentacle-like structures. There are these tiny reddish tentacle-like structures. And on tip of each and every tentacle is, you know, it looks as if a very shiny little ball, glittery balls, ball-like thing. But these are extremely sticky substances. Sticky to an extent when an insect by mistake sits here, it just curls, you know, it just curls it from the end and traps the insect. And the insect gets so sticky that it is unable to just, just get, you know, just fly away. It just is unable to fly away. The sticky substances at the tip is known as, uh, you know, uh, mucilage. Mucilage is the word which can be used for these sticky substances. Right? Now, here you might ask a question that you know these pitcher plants had the digestive juice here now how would sundew digest this insect how would it digest now what happens is that you know the moment it traps the insects here this you know the stem uh, maybe you know this stem or the main stem of the drosera plant okay let me tell you drosera also has green leaves it can make its own food but you know as in the properties of parasites it will draw only nitrogen from this so what happens is that 
I think so. We are running a little late, so I'll you know maybe switch over a little quickly now because now that you have understood the concepts of parasites, so the cell sap, the, the sap of the stem has the digestive juices here. Here, the pigeon had the digestive juice. Here, the stem had the digest. The sap has the digestive juice, so that would help in disintegrating the insect. That would have the enzyme break down the insect and give nutrition to the plants. Drosera. Okay. Mom, but how does the cell sap come out of the cells onto the surface of the stem? So it that's what that's the reason why I said you know these these, these there are these tiny structures here where the sap is present and it would maybe you know ooze out a little by little uh, you know till it reaches the insect and then break it down help it dis disintegrate. Okay. Next we come to bladder warts. What are bladder warts? In case of bladder warts, this is a bladder wart tree, right? Just look at the leaves. The leaves are extremely slender, thread-like. You know, these are the leaves. The leaves are very ten slender. But can you see these round structures? These are the pear-shaped bladders. You know, if you put it under the microscope, each pear here, you know, this one pear, if put under the microscope, would look like this. Right? So what it does is that the bladders, the moment, you know, an insect sits somewhere around here, the moment it feels the weight, the bladder opens its trap and engulfs the insect. Here too inside, the digest enzymes are present. It disintegrates the insect and draws nutrition. The plant draws its nutrition. And remember, the bladder is open to trap the insects in one thousandth of a second. That is how fast it opens and closes its trap. It's like a trap door which works at flash of a second. Right? So that is bladder wart. Next we come to venous fly trap. This is, you know, very common and most of you must have you know, studied about it. These are these are leaves basically, you know, greenish color on the outside, reddish from inside, claw-like structures here right looks very colorful so if it is anything that's colorful the foolish flies would always insects would come and sit here and think that there is food but they are being fooled so what happens is that they are being trapped and you know the way it forms like a claw this side and that side it forms like a claw and the insect just cannot escape these are very stiff hairs it just claws the traps the insect very tightly right so, uh, you know, as some, one of you has very correctly said that, you know, even our hands, it has the capacity to engulf or maybe trap our hands, but our hands are, these are not like thorns, right? So we'll not get hurt. We're smart enough, we are strong enough to take out our hands. Okay, so the flap also closes, both the side of the leaf flaps closes in a fraction of a second. That fast it 